our little kingdom. Now he's saying he wants to clear out the loft and he is breaking our hearts. The loft is really an attic because years ago he closed in the space with drywall and called it our little kingdom. Even though we were not kings but princesses, three daughters at first, then only two. Over the years, a dune of boxes and balled up tarps and old lamps and orphan socks has taken shape in the space between the minuscule bathroom with its world's smallest shower stall and the futon where the reconstituted teddy bear with his one blue jeans arm and one red sock leg and one pearly button eye has sat around on his own ever since we girls moved on to college and our grown-up lives. We are well into our grown-up lives now. So far in that when our father says he wants to clear out the loft, we know that we girls are the ones who will be doing the clearing out, with dad supervising from the living room couch. Not to worry about him, he says. He has everything he needs downstairs, his television remote, his e-book, and his pills on the card table in front of him, plus his cane lying there on the floor, but she keeps knocking to the ground on purpose. We've seen him do it, but we pretend we haven't. Each thing that we pull out of the junk pile in the attic and uncrick and dust off with our sleeves has us sitting on the floor laughing and wasting away too much time. We are carried off by Polaroids of long gone boyfriends and squeal worthy powder blue jeans. Well aware that there are children to feed and medicines to be doused and husbands to call. We are women of our times, career moms with children who could be our grandchildren, a dying father, and a hunger for leisure. We are not laughing anymore, just sitting silently staring at the rug. We found an old coloring collage book that Mama made for our little sister, and a hole has been unplugged. A gap through which our grief leaks out and floods our little kingdom. Then we dry our tears and laugh again, and thank goodness for this ping-ponging of emotions, because how else does a person live with this kind of loss? There is no trapdoor to our little kingdom, no ladder-like steps, just a plain staircase that goes from the ground floor to one landing, which is a good thing since I'm out of shape and feeling it after that long walk yesterday and the bike ride with the boys the day before and doing it with Jonas the afternoon before I left home. Jonas and I did that noisy, urgent kind of thing that happens when you know the kids will be out at a friend's place for a bit and you feel guilty because you are loving just the two of two-ness of the moment, and you're so relieved that it still works that way between you, because you've had your doubts lately. And each up and down of the stairs to the loft-turned attic goes straight to your sore and softened glutes. The stairs used to be just unfinished cement with strips of wood in it, but then Mama spilled all that red paint on them and Dad covered the steps with slabs of granite that he brought from the family that makes tombstones. Their family name used to make us girls giggle and wonder, were they always called Stone, or did they choose that name because of what they do? We won't be needing the services of the Stone family, granite marble cut to order, once the time comes. 
Dad has already instructed us to scatter his ashes up at the lake, which could present a problem if he doesn't make it through the winter. Here we are with leaves to rake still, and the neighborhood pond is already crunchy, which means the big lake too could freeze over early. And then what? How strange that we should worry about the lake freezing over when the lake not freezing enough has been the great tragedy of our lives. We laugh at the dark irony of it, we two remaining princesses. Then we fall silent again, thinking of our little sister who fell through the ice and never became big.